we are covering beets. Now, if you've never tried beets before, they have a very natural, earthy, sweet taste. Hey guys, it's Derek. Uh, found a, or we ended up with a bunch of beets in my parents' garden this year. Um, I ended up with most of them. So, uh, this one's the biggest one in the group. Uh, it was, I think it's a little over a pound and a half, so a pretty big beet. Um, I've decided it's probably too big to do to do much with um, as far as cooking. Um, so I'm going to try to make a batch of uh, beet kvass with this. So uh, get moved over to the kitchen and uh, we can get started. Okay, so um, I weighed this in grams and it came out, I think it was about 550, um, something like that. So uh, what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna do all this in a half gallon jar. But yeah, I'm going to be doing this in a half gallon jar, and uh, I'm just going to cut the um, top and tail it, you know, cut the ends off like that. Um, I'm not going to peel this. Um, I washed this off after it came out of the garden, um, so it's already clean even though it doesn't look like it. Like, it was sticking up out of the ground about, about that far when I got it. So, uh, it's not going to look like a normal bead anyway. But, uh, but yeah, I'm going to cut these up into cubes. Um, you don't want to, that's pretty. But, uh, you don't want to cut this up into real small pieces because it will, um, affect the fermentation, um, of the kvass. It, it won't make kvass, it'll make, uh, Beet booze. So, but yeah, I'm just gonna cut these up real quick. Or they have a very natural, earthy, sweet flavor to them, and nutritionally speaking, they are packed with antioxidants, vitamins. Okay. This usually works a little better when you're doing uh, doing it with fresh beets, but I uh, had a lot on my plate and I didn't get to them very quick. So we'll see how this actually goes long term. Okay, so I've got them all Move it over here. There we go. Throw them all in here. Like so. Okay, so we got that. Okay, so um, from here we are going to get, uh, I'm going to put in a tablespoon of, I'm using kosher salt, um, you can use you know, Himalayan salt or canning salt, it just can't have iodine in it because the iodine will kill off all the uh, probiotics. So, um, but yeah, I'm going to use about a tablespoon. Um, if you like your stuff more salty, you can add more salt. If you don't, you know, opposite. But uh, I'm going to do it with, uh, with a tablespoon. Okay, so my memory card filled up. I don't know how much of that I kept, but um, so far I've added the beets and the salt to this. Um, and then it's uh, one large beet and a, a tablespoon of uh, kosher salt. And then what I'm also going to add, um, I don't have any whey on me, but I just fermented these uh, pickles the other day. And that cloudy stuff that's in them, it's, I mean, it's kind of fogged up a little bit, but, but that cloudy stuff that's in them is the same bacteria that, uh, that converts this into kvass. So I'm going to give it a little bit of a boost and put um, put about a tablespoon, I'll put two tablespoons in of this because um, it's already established and it'll, it'll get things going a little quicker. So, okay, and then um, this is something new for me. I haven't tried this before, so we'll see how it goes. Um, I'm going to put a piece of ginger in. I'm going to cut it and slice it up some. So, bear with me real quick. Now I uh, 
saw this on uh, somebody else's channel that somebody had done this and I wanted to try it for myself so we'll see how it goes. Okay, so I got all that in there and then I am using uh, distilled water. I got this from like Aldi's or something. Um, you don't want to use uh, city water because um, the chlorine and the fluoride and, and all the stuff that's in there, um, it's designed to kill bacteria and you don't want to kill kill your uh, your bacteria off in this instance. So I'm going to put most of this in the jar. Alright, that'll be good. Yeah, that worked for me. Okay. And then I'm going to put uh, the lid on. And then I'm going to set it over here. Um, I'll try it a little bit every day um, just to make sure it's doing what it needs to and all that. Here, I'll give it a little bit of a shake to get the salt and everything mixed up. But, uh, but yeah, so um, yeah, in a few days, anywhere between three days and a week, um, this will be ready. And uh, I'll come back and I'll, I'll show you the final product. Okay, so it's been, I think, six days uh, since I filmed the first part of this. Um, as you can see, it's got a pretty nice color to it. Let's see if I can block the light a little bit. But got pretty good color. It's uh, fairly clear. But, uh, and then on top, there's a lot of, uh, a lot of foam forming, so... Uh, and there's some little floaties and that kind of thing, but that's okay. Um, so what I'm going to do now is I've got my uh, bowl with strainer here. And I'm going to open this up and then uh, pour it through. Um, actually, let me grab a, grab a coffee filter. That way I can get all the little, little bits and pieces. So... A little bit of carbonation. Open it. Okay. Let's see if I can do this and get it on camera. So I got the, got this strain in. Um, it's about halfway done. That's the rest of it. You can kind of see the all the little floaties and stuff. Um, that's just from the beets. There's not. It's not a mold or anything. There wasn't any um, anything like that in the um, in the batch. So, but yeah, it's looking pretty good. I haven't tried any yet, but I'm gonna bottle this up. And uh, that is how you make beak kvass.